So Clifford Allison is in the pits. Stop and go for him. Boy, that was a big crash down in turn one. A lot of cars in trouble in turn one. At least four cars are in trouble. There goes one spinning. Now we have a fire erupting on one of them. This is a multi-car tangle down in turn number two. Several cars sliding to the infield. And the yellow flag comes out for the third time. It looks like Richie, no, it's not Richie's car burning, but it looks like his car sitting on the bank of the racetrack. And there's a driver climbing out of the car. We're glad to see that. It appears to be the number 48 of Andy Gensman that has caught fire. The 83 white car also there. That's Mike Wren, but the one on fire appears to be Gensman. Let's take a look at a replay and see if we can determine how this multi-car tangle began. We see some smoke up in front. A car is already spinning now. The car is going to go down. They're just going to go back up. We see him here. Another car is spun back there. He's backed in the wall, and that's where the fire came from. And he's coming off. And the oh, car turned over. Turn, yes. Yeah. He overturned, and it landed on its wheels and gets drilled again by another car. Meanwhile, the car explodes in flames. And even though he was hit a couple of times, overturned, Gensman had the ability to climb out of that car and he appears to be okay from a different angle there's the 88 car that's David Elliott as he goes around loses the, the left rear tire was looks like he'd left rear tire was off the car he slides to the uh, infield out of harm's way the 67 of Bobby Massey goes by and from yet another angle I'll tell you, once you see all that smoke in, in front of you, you don't know what to do. You jam the brakes on, try to make a move, and hope to dodge everything. But uh, sometimes lack of experience when you get in a situation with that. So a lot of these drivers don't have a lot of experience at super speedway racing, running at these speeds. When something happens in front of you, and you see all of that smoke, you can't see the outside wall, or can't see the cars in front of you, and uh, you'll just do things then that you normally wouldn't do. And, but if you have a lot of experience, you know the best thing to do is to hold that car as straight as you can. Don't lock those wheels, because not only on a race car, but on a passenger car, you don't have control of the car when the wheels are locked. Yeah, you want to maintain your uh, attitude and your calmness and just try to drive out of it. Here it is from the uh, airship Shamu. Several cars at the bottom of the racetrack in turn number two. That's a blue and white car I thought a little bit ago was Richie Petty. That was not. That was Mike Davis that was sitting on the racetrack. And we can see the two cars there together. Getting the roll back to load this car up. That's Andy Ginsman's car. Joining ESPN4 coverage of the ARCA 200 today is Airship Shamu, the goodwill ambassador for SeaWorld Parks in Florida, Texas, California, and Ohio. SeaWorld rescues and rehabilitates hundreds of marine mammals each year, and we're glad to have them with us today, piloting Airship Shamu, Peter Buckley, and Bill Stufer. It's 194 feet long and nearly seven stories tall. The 15 car of Craig Rubright also involved in the incident. He has a lot of damage there on the right side of the car, but has made it back to the pit area as the crew grows to work and puts on new tires and tries to get the body work away from the tires. I tell you, that car can't be competitive after this, Bob, with all the sheet metal damage that is done on it. But he is from Florida, Clearwater, Clearwater, Florida, and certainly I'm sure he has a lot of fans in the grandstand. He'd like to get out there and run some more for them. Craig, an accountant by trade, a former uh, SCCA and IMSA road racer, making his way into stock car competition. The number nine car of Mike Davis is just about to be uh, lifted off the racetrack by the wrecker. Looks like Mike nailed somebody pretty good with the front of that car. I think we were talking about a little bit ago that the inexperience and what happens, you just don't know what to do in a situation like this. Basically what creates these multi-car crashes for an inexperienced driver, when they see trouble in front, they jump off the gas. They immediately back off the gas, and just that hasty movement will spin a car out here at Daytona. You've got to come off the throttle easy. You've got to go back on the throttle. Everything you do at this racetrack, has to be done so easy. And that's exactly what happened. These guys going to the corner, they see smoke, they jump off the gas, and around the car goes. Dr. Punch has uh, more on this multi-car accident out in turn number two. Jerry? 
Bob, we, we caught up with Bob Shack, who's one of the winningest drivers in ARCA Series history, and you were on the radios with Mike Davis. What did Mike say happened over there? Uh, he said that uh, somebody got down in the grass there and, and come back out in front of him and basically uh, had no place to go. How's Mike? Mike's good. These, these fine cars tore up, but we can fix it as long as he's okay. Mike Davis okay. It's some scary moments for some of the ARCA drivers as one car comes off the grass back up in front of a lot of others. A lot of serious sheet metal damage. There back were there. six cars involved in the incident, Jerry. Gary Rubright, Bob Denny, Andy Gensman, Mike Davis, David Elliott, and Mike Wren. But as far as we know, no drivers injured. Gensman was our biggest question mark, and we saw him jump out of his car and is okay despite the car rolling over and then catching fire. But the cleanup will take a while, so we'll take a break. Thanks for joining us for coverage of the ARCA 200 at the World Center of Racing.